Welcome everyone to episode 22 of Blueprint. My name is Bobby Machado, CEO of Signa Marketing. A happy 2021 to everyone out there. Uh, we made it, we're, we're now in 2021 and uh, 2020 is behind us. Uh, so nothing but good moving forward. Uh, really happy to, to answer today's lineup of questions. Um, if this is the first time you're checking out the show, uh, basically this is a fun Q&A style show in which I answer any and all digital marketing questions on how to market your business online. So if you are a small business owner, a marketing manager, or even just someone getting into the industry, uh, ask away, I'm happy to answer questions from all angles. Uh, that being said, we have, uh, as usual, our free Google ad audits. Uh, in case you are running Google ads right now and you feel like you can get more bang for your buck, um, or you're curious if you can just maximize it and be a little bit more efficient, uh, we are doing free Google ad account reviews. So if you are interested in that, uh, feel free to, to click the link below here on YouTube. Uh, we have a link that goes straight to a form that you can submit a request and you'll be connected with one of our strategists. Uh, other than that, I'm really excited to get into today's questions and we will go ahead and get started with the show. work on building our social media presence while our website is still in development? That's a great question. You should absolutely start building your social media presence. Uh, there's no reason why not to get into content marketing and start educating your target audience on uh, what your product or service is, um, how, is it, how is it different, um, et cetera, and start to build up, um, if anything, just that, that momentum on when the, the actual site launch is and stuff like that too. So you bring people along for the ride um, and let them know, be upfront that, hey, we don't have our website yet, we're, building, we're launching our service, we're launching our product, we're launching our business, uh, this is what it's about and start to just go all out on content marketing. Content marketing does take a ton of work and so there's really no reason why not to start even if you don't have a site, um, you can start building that type of awareness. Maybe you're even in a situation where you can take on orders um, even if you don't have a site and you know you stir up enough momentum where you're getting uh, direct messages on social media um, that people are inquiring about your services or products. So don't let a website being developed stop you from building your social media uh, marketing efforts. Uh, go ahead and execute them. There's literally nothing holding you back on that. I keep hearing that SEO traffic is free traffic. Is that true? Yes, so it's said everywhere that SEO traffic is free and it is in the sense that the users that are landing on your website, you didn't have to pay necessarily for each user to get to your site, how paid media works. Um, with SEO, it is free, it is organic in that sense. Um, however, if you're looking at it from a business owner's perspective, it's an investment absolutely to build, you know, to build that type of organic traffic. You have to be producing content, you have to be uh, executing SEO strategies and building out your off-site SEO efforts in terms of you know backlink acquisition um, and essentially kind of doing what I call it is digital PR because that's really what you're doing is doing digital PR at, at that point um, but yeah if anything it is going to be it's going to cost time effort or money or all three um, to get organic traffic so you know if, if we look at it from that standpoint it's always going to cost something in terms of money in some sense, whether it's paid advertising or SEO organic um, efforts. Um, that being said, the benefits of organic is the fact that you are getting, you know, if you, if, if you do build out your organic traffic to a point where you are uh, getting a, a decent amount of traffic, you can get that while you're asleep type of deal. It's not the same as with paid where paid, you can turn it on, turn it off. It's really a faucet um, at that point. But with organic, it's free flowing. It, it, once you build up your organic, um, it continues and continues. Now, also that doesn't mean it continues forever. There's competition and there's people going after the same keywords as you are and stuff like that. So you still have to continue to build and nurture your SEO efforts. SEO never stops um, in, in that regard. Um, but so hopefully that kind of at least gives you some comparison as far as the differences between paid and SEO and why SEO can be considered free. Um, but that being said, it's always gonna cost a combination of time, effort, or money. 
we have all our on-site SEO done, but we have not seen our rankings increase yet, and it's been months. What is the issue? All right, so that is very common in, in terms of thinking that, hey, I did all my on-site SEO, you know, my site is optimized, that should be ranking by now. Um, and that's not the, that is not true, uh, depends uh, on a lot of variables. So, so let's dive into those, if anything. Uh, one main one is gonna be authority. So uh, when we think about authority, we have to ask, okay, how do we build authority? Building authority comes from backlink acquisition. So, uh, and there's a lot of other variables like brand mentions and stuff like that, but for just to keep things simple, I'm gonna just focus on backlink acquisition. So you have your on-site SEO done. That's basically doing a great job of telling Google and users who you are, what you do, uh, where you do it, you know, et, et cetera. Um, from that point, you've basically made claims. There's no authority or proof or anything like that um, that from, from a search engine standpoint that these claims are true and stuff like that. So that's where the authority aspect comes in uh, and where I call digital PR comes in. So you start to go out and find other relevant sites that are talking about the same subject as yours and through a couple of different uh, strategies, one of my favorite is guest blog posting, but acquire backlinks, so a link from any of these third-party sites that are relevant to the topic that you're talking about, and they link back to your website. Over time, you keep doing this and building up your backlink profile, you build up all this authority that is being channeled to your website. And so the result is a Google and being in other search engines see that authority that's now on your website. They see all these high authority websites linking to yours and saying, oh, okay, great. This, this website is a value. It is uh, authoritative in that sense. And so the keywords that this site is already uh, looking to uh, rank for because of what's infused in the content, they're gonna start, you're gonna start to see those rankings increase over time. So in a nutshell, that's how that works. But a lot of times we get a new website or we get a site that said, oh, you know, uh, we're on-site SEO optimized now, uh, we're good. Um, that is not the case. Don't expect rankings just because you got on-site. Now you have to go to the authority side and see how you can build up authority, uh, authority so that you can increase your rankings. Um, something very common that we hear a lot of times is, hey, well, my competitor, you know, put out a, a new page and they're already ranking. The thing is that you have to look at that competitor and see how much authority they have. Because the great thing about building authority is that when you get massive uh, in terms of authority, you can put up a page tomorrow and it starts ranking super quick. So that's, that, those are the differences. If you have a brand new website, no one knows of you, or there, there's no brand equity, no authority or anything like that, um, it's gonna take longer to rank for those, those types of terms that you wanna go after. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's definitely gonna be take longer because you don't have authority built yet for your site. So uh, always focus on the two pieces. You have your on-site, cool, I'm done. Then move on to off-site SEO, and that's where you'll actually see uh, rankings manifest over time. How granular do I need to be reviewing data in my Google Ads campaign? So a few things that we like to, to dive into when we talk about uh, going granular is uh, first is segmentation of device. Um, when you're running ad campaigns, ad groups, keywords, um, display campaigns, or anything like that, uh, you can segment by device to see how many, how, out of the 100% of the traffic that you're attaining, how much is desktop, how much is mobile, and how much is tablet. Uh, the reason being is because you might start to identify that a lot of your traffic is from, from mobile, uh, but it's not converting, or vice versa. It's a lot from, uh, from desktop, but not converting. Um, and a lot of times, to be honest, we see maybe that, you know, from desktop is not converting as high as, as mobile. And so um, that allows us to make decisions as far as uh, device bid adjustments and say, hey, you know what, we want to bid higher on mobile because there's more conversions. It's a higher conversion rate that we're seeing um, in the last 30 days or stuff like that. So that is one uh, area that we really like to spend time on. Um, additionally, is also geographic locations, which cities uh, are bringing in a lot of traffic or, and not just that, but also which ones are actually converting um, because that, at that point, you can actually start to adjust bids at a geographic uh, level as well. So those are um, a couple areas right there. Uh, lastly is your impression share. Um, we like to definitely look at your impression share to see how much of the market you're already attaining and how much you're leaving on the table. 
Um, it doesn't always make sense to go after 100% of impression share. It just depends on your budget and how much, how, how many leads, how many sales, how much XYZ you're looking to attain. So, uh, but impression share is absolutely something that we look at. Um, and so one last thing that is quote unquote kind of granular is we like to go into an ad group and see which keywords are taking up all the budget. Because a lot of times at the ad group level, you'll see you know, uh, your metrics there, but you don't know the full story behind in terms of keyword wise, what's happening and what's resulting in the metrics that you're seeing at the ad group level. So we love to dive into the keyword level and see, okay, which out of you know, 20 keywords here in this ad group, which ones are actually uh, spending all the, the money in terms of this ad group and which one's bringing in all the traffic. Um, because what's happening sometimes is if your campaigns are lim limited by budget or anything like that, you'll start to see some, some of these keywords dominate all the traffic and use it up and not allow all these other keywords to breathe. And so, um, so we love to go into the keyword level so we can start to assess and make decisions whether we should break up ad groups uh, or we should basically take this one ad group, split it into two, three different, more highly themed ad groups, uh, or if we should even you know, create different campaigns and basically extract keywords from, from a certain campaign, a certain ad group, and put them in their own campaign so that they have their own budget. Um, so that's basically just to help with budget management at that point. Um, so those are a few things that we like to dive into in terms of uh, being granular. Um, there's a ton of other KPIs and, and uh, metrics that we like to dive into, but those are really some of the common ones that usually make the, the highest impact. I'm running Google ad campaigns, but I don't see my paid traffic in Google Analytics. What am I doing wrong? Okay, so this we see happen uh, too often. There's a couple things. First is most likely, well, for sure, you don't have auto tagging enabled in Google Ads. So make sure that in Google Ads, go to your account settings, make sure that uh, auto tagging is enabled. What this will allow uh, you to do is to be able to see your Google Analytics traffic uh, reflect pay traffic from Google Ads. So it will actually, if you go to the source and medium, uh, report, you'll see Google slash CPC start to show up and that's your Google paid traffic. Um, also, don't make sure to I, make sure to link Google ads and Google analytics accounts together. That's also going to allow you to see your actual campaign data reflected in Google analytics uh, in, in that sense too. So make sure you do that. Um, now, sometimes, you know, there is uh, instances where you want to control the, the how, how that traffic, that paid traffic is registered or recorded in Google Analytics. You know, even if you're using like HubSpot or some other type of platform where they have their own tracking uh, parameters and stuff like that, um, that's, that's pretty common. So um, at that point, you know, auto, auto tagging works great, but if you wanna have control in terms of customizing how that traffic is recorded in Google Analytics, um, then you will use UTM tagging. And so just simply go to Google right now and just type in UTM builder, you'll find uh, a, a cool little tool um, to be able to basically create custom UTM tags. But basically what that allows uh, you to do is to basically categorize traffic from a source um, in a way that makes sense for you in Google Analytics. And you can make these, the, 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 the source, the medium, the campaign, the term to be whatever you'd like. Um, it's basically up to you if, uh, on how you wanna customize it. Uh, but that's another way to make sure that pay traffic from Google Ads is being registered in Google Analytics. Um, so yeah, but to be honest, the easiest way, just make sure auto tagging is enabled. That's like the, the easiest way right there. I just launched my website and I need results quickly. I have a healthy marketing budget as well. Which traffic sources do you recommend beginning with for results? So that's a great question. Uh, if you have a healthy marketing budget, um, then you can, uh, this is the way that we really look to ap approach, especially with new brands, new websites, uh, et cetera. First, we need to fill up that top funnel. We need to get you out there uh, in front of your target audience and start to fill up the top funnel. We're not, you know, basically think of this as a V. We can't just go straight to bottom of the funnel uh, activities if there's no credibility or anything like that, because at those points, um, even if there are conversions, it's going to be a pretty low conversion rate and you can burn through a lot of cash that way. So that's why we got to think at least a little bit slightly long term in terms of building uh, top funnel traffic. So a, a great way is just to make sure that on a, with, your, with your site that has launched, 
um, that there's at least a decent amount of blog posts that you launched with um, so that there's actually some great content already on the site. Um, and we'd love to use that top, those, those types of blog posts um, as uh, uh, through paid media uh, campaigns. So it could be you know, taking a blog post, promoting it on Facebook slash Instagram, or if you're in the B2B space on LinkedIn, um, get that out content out there quick. Paid, I'm saying paid right now because you want results quickly. So paid. At the same time, I would be doing SEO because more I, I love long term, but SEO is hands down is going to work over time. But for this case, uh, using paid to get your, tra your articles and your, your content out fast in front of your target audience. The people that engage with that content, they're going to land on your website and you're going to get cookied because you're going to make sure that you have remarketing set up. Uh, so make sure that whether you have Google ads already, like a Google ads account, a Facebook ads account, you have your remarketing tag set up on your website so that anyone that hits your site, they're going to get cookied into the remarketing list. Um, that's important, especially when you're running top funnel campaigns. Uh, so in terms of channel, I would definitely focus on social media channels because it's the best bang for your buck right now. If you have video creative, I would absolutely be running Facebook ads or uh, Facebook ads, but also YouTube ads because those are um, super cheap too for, uh, in terms of being highly targeted as well. Um, so make sure that you're building up top, top of funnel traffic. That is crucial right there. Top of funnel traffic, then start to remarket those users with something that's uh, of actual value. It could be a lead magnet, um, or even if you wanted to so show um, uh, some social proof in terms of testimonials or anything like that, and then it ends with you know how to try X Y Z with a certain coupon code or something something that starts to get them thinking in, into the consideration mode, and that's really what you're trying to do is get them into consideration mode. So that's why middle funnel is super good to have case studies or testimonials or something that's social proof uh, ready. Um, again, we're talking about a lot of stuff that's if you have a healthy marketing budget, you'll be able to execute. It's definitely not cheap, uh, but it's, if you have a health, healthy marketing budget, these types, of, these, these types of activities from top funnel to middle funnel are going to do uh, tremendously well for you because then you'll actually have an audience to sell. So that's when we get to the bottom funnel where you can start to remarket users that, that uh, took any action at the, at the middle funnel phase and start to remarket those users with a bottom funnel offer. So this could be, this is basically going in for the sell, being super upfront as far as what the sale is or how to take action or anything like that. And so there's really three tiers of activities. Um, and right now I'm, I'm using this example with Facebook and uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube for the video side of things. Um, however, at the same time, I would definitely be running paid search campaigns on Google and Bing. These, on these, on these camp networks, um, that's where I'm, if anything, testing a lot of keywords to see which ones are converting, which ones are not. I can go after the keywords that I know for a fact have high intent um, based on you know, what, our, what our service or product is. Um, but the reason why that's important is because though, even though that's going directly bottom funnel, those people already have intent. They're on Google and being actually searching for what you have to offer. Um, they have no social proof or anything like that yet, but they're, they're actively, you know, if anything, searching for something you have to offer already. The great thing is that people that don't convert from those channels, but they have already shown that interest, they're gonna get cookied too by Google. And when they go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, et cetera, they're gonna get remarketed with your stuff as well. So they're gonna say, hey, I was searching for XYZ, I landed on this website, um, I wasn't ready to you know, make its decision yet, but wow, I'm on Facebook and I see them now here as well. So that's how you start to build uh, that comfort level up um, to be able, be able to get people down to the bottom funnel to actually convert. So um, in a nutshell, that's how we, would, that, that's how we really like to approach um, these types of scenarios where there's healthy marketing budget. We know uh, that we've done all our, all our research um, et cetera, and we know that we have a great product and a great service. At that point, it's execution mode. And so in a nutshell, that's how we recommend approaching uh, these types of situations. All right, everyone, that wraps up the first video of 2021, episode 22. Thank you so much for your questions. I really appreciate them. As always, I'm more than happy to dive into any questions that you have related to digital marketing. So if you're a small business owner, a marketing manager, or it's just someone that's just wondering about digital marketing in that sense, I'm more than happy to 
be of service to you guys uh, in any way that I can and provide answers uh, where, wherever I can when it comes to digital marketing. So if you have any questions, send them here in, in YouTube in the comments below. It could be even on any of our social media channels, just at Signal Marketing. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc. So you can find us there and send your questions on those platforms as well. Uh, other than that, thank you so much. I look forward to episode 23 and answering more of your questions.